Python. Flask. Postgres. Long ago, Tech YouTube lived together in harmony. Then everything changed when Trend Black attacked. Only Danny, master of all four elements, could stop him. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. A few months passed and I discovered the new Danny. And although his skills aren't great, I believe he can A, learn how to make a multiplayer game, and B, publish it by the end of the month. Has there ever been a better time to capitalize on people's loneliness? Like if you look on Google Trends, we can see that the term multiplayer game had a huge popularity spike around March 22 to 28. And when did the USA lock down? That's right, March 20. Correlation doesn't mean causation, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, dude. So then I looked up how to make a multiplayer game. Please help fast, I need to flex on my YouTube channel. Turns out the answer was, don't even actually make it multiplayer. This black hole simulator was created with multiplayer in mind, practiced by competing against actual people play loading graphics searching server pairing match playing the game there's other players here turn off my wi-fi here game works perfectly i don't get disconnected even though i'm not connected to the internet anymore morally i have no problem with making a fake multiplayer game but i virtue signaled for so long that now i have to keep up the act that i'm a good person i also thought about making a multiplayer party game because uh you can't have in-person parties what's a multiplayer party game uh charades or a variation of charades, or a variation of charades, or a variation of charades. Hmm. I think we should do a variation of charades. On this side, we have Draw My Things, a game developed by a team of engineers working for Zynga, a billion dollar company. Likely front end engineers to design and create a functioning website, back end engineers to do routing, networking, and databases, DevOps engineers to do the deployment, security engineers to make sure everything is secure, and a QA team to test and find bugs. And on the other side, we have Trend Black, a 20 year old kid who tried to break the brown programmer stereotype and become a fitness model, but failed and eventually became that exact stereotype. Wait, who is this kid? This is my most ambitious project yet because it's not just one thing I have to learn and it's also not just full stack I have to learn. I have to literally learn the entire tech department. Well at least I sort of have a QA team. I mean I can just push to production and wait for the angry emails. I want you to imagine a game called The Ugly Monklings and you're playing a character named Matt. Let's say there's a function called move that takes in a character and the new location's coordinates. In a single player game, clicking somewhere calls that function. But in a multiplayer game, clicking somewhere sends the data to a server and then that server triggers the function for every person in the game. I created a web app using Flask with Python because Python is my favorite language, which is something I hate admitting because people who can't code are always like, me too, when in reality they just don't know anything else. On the front end, I'm handling the sockets using JavaScript, which I hate because I think it's an ugly language, but maybe I'm just salty because it's my worst language, which is funny because I said the same thing about game development, which raises the question, what are you good at, Trent? Anyway, let's make an instant messaging app to test out the sockets. This part is honestly cool by itself, like you can use this to ask out a girl because she might be impressed by the fact that you coded a messaging app, she might find it endearing that you made a website to talk to her, but most importantly, if things go wrong, she can't screenshot it and send it to her friends. As an example, I'm gonna use my chat app to swoon Amanda from Swell Entertainment. Holy shit, it works. Uh, I think she disconnected or something. Well, hopefully it wasn't a bug in my code. Uh, I just copy and paste the 10 lines of code from Stack Overflow. All right, well, now we have the canvas, but we gotta be a little creative on how we socketify it. Socket of how we make it multiplayer. Now you could send the entire canvas every single time someone makes a change, but then you'd kind of be a fucking Neanderthal. The faster way is only send the changes and then have that apply locally. The part that took by far the most work 
only to be appreciated the least. So basically the two things that the database stores are rooms and users. Room names are randomly generated and set as the room's primary key so we can retrieve them in basically constant time. Rooms have a one-to-many relationship with users. When a player disconnects, they're deleted, which reduces how many users are in that room. And once a room reduces to zero users or the game ends, the room and all users are deleted. <sighs> Look at me explaining this shit as if I didn't just learn this myself last week. YouTube is so fake. If the game randomly goes down one day, then no, I probably got sued by Draw My Things or I just didn't want to pay for the server fees anymore. And also, I'm pretty sure a lot of my audience are other software engineers, and I'm pretty sure you guys can probably find some security vulnerabilities, and you could probably crash my site. Therefore, I'm going to kindly ask that you guys don't do that. It's time for some good old gentrification. So I was thinking of naming the server something like Draw My Things, but just use synonyms like Guess My Sketch, or uh, Postulate My Illustrate, uh... But I think the move is to just find a cool domain and build on that. Like a domain name is an incredibly important aspect for anything you can build. It's essentially your online identity. I chose to use a .tech domain firstly because they're way cooler than .com. I mean, this is a tech channel. We make tech projects. It's a no brainer. I want a .tech domain. Secondly, and probably the main reason is there's just so much more available domains. Like every single .com domain is already taken. It's so annoying. But for .tech, you can actually find so many rare words and cop them. Plus, popular companies are starting to use .tech domains too, like even Intel uses them. So I started typing in random words related to drawing and I saw that watercolor.tech was available, so I copped it at an 80% discount. Like seriously, and you can get one too. Learn more about .tech domains and search to see if a .tech domain of your choice is available, and trust me, a lot of rare ones still are. So use the code go.tech slash trend or the link in the description for 80% off. All right, back to the video. So now we have a theme, watercolor. This is what makes my game more than just a high school project. It's an actual quirk. So I just made the game have a lower opacity. That's watercolor, right? Then we need a nice homepage. Cool, let's just go to HTML5 up template, let's delete 95% of it, and then just find some free pictures that look watercolor related. All right, well, it's time to play the game. So I gathered up the squad, you know, Nick White, Kevin Notton, Adam Wong, and Ben Awad. I made this little game. It might be super buggy. It's not because the code, the thing I used to wink, host wink. it. <laughs> I'm hosting it for free. Could let's spend try $5 get a, or Honestly, have a yeah. terrible program. <laughs> yeah. Watercolor.tech. Color with an O or with a U? Power well, spelled the right the way. way. Room does not exist, so that's pretty strange. Your mom. Okay, who's being funny? I said use your real name. What do you <laughs> think, put your mom? Let me, let me draw, fam. Ben could build there we this go. in one hour. Where's the part where you steal everyone's data? <laughs> well, on Java try, Things, yeah. it gives you words to pick. I didn't want to implement that, so you just type what you're going to draw. So. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start off easy just to make sure this shit works. Oh, man. Check, sister. That's, That's a, a cat? cat? Are you oh, sure? wait, oh wait, it worked, it worked. <laughs> There's it? not a scroll bar on the message. Dude, yeah, this, <laughs> no. this could be sold for millions. Well, Fang is going to hire video. you, Trent. Can I not host an online Yo, game for free? Have... Nobody will play this, man. <laughs> <laughs> How many unit tests do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't test it at all. I was homeless while making this, dude. Did you use Angular, buddy? Come on. Ben, did you just try to inject JavaScript there? Shh. <laughs> Kevin, what are you doing, bro? Just bug smashing, you know? <laughs> Can you see my drawings? It's an iPhone. It's an iPhone. Boom. iPhone. No, close. my end. My no. Close, close, close. Oh, close. yeah, you could use HTML. Yo, Adam, no. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> I'll put freaking JavaScript in here, can't we? <laughs> 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 yeah, you did make a really good chat, Trin. <laughs> From now on, we only talk in here. So like I said, I end every video now by responding to comments on my previous video. Do you know what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I do not. <laughs> LeMail, Cartoon Trim Black do be looking kind of thick. Stop it. That it's a wrong channel. We do not make those jokes here. There's not any orange gang milk blue fucking Danny bullshit here. I kind of see some inspiration from Code Bullet and I like it. Instant sub. Thanks a lot, dude. Code Bullet is a beast. But then we have this guy over here. Not inspiration. It's copy and he's obnoxious. <laughs> okay, Kiki Twerks. Some dude on the internet that posts videos of girls twerking. Yeah, I'm the obnoxious one, you fucking creep.